a lot of us don't feel like we've got hope left because we've been through so much and we've done so many things and we're just hopeless. You know, there's no way in the world that now I'm 55 years old, I'm going to find someone that loves me or there's no way in the world that I'm ever going to get married or have a baby or, you know, but if you really sit back and look at your life, you're surrounded. Like for those of us that um, feel like we can't have things in life, we're surrounded with all those things that we hope for. We're surrounded with it, but we can't see it because it's not given to us in the way that we think God should give it to us in. He does it in his way to ensure that we have what it is that we need. So if we pay attention to what he's giving us in the way he's giving it to us, then we can see that we've got everything we've ever dreamed of. We just don't see it because it's not how we thought it would be. We're not, it's not how we um, imagine it or fathom it would be. Um, so a lot of times we feel hopeless. But I am a um, walking, living, breathing testimony that hope Hope, 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 excuse me, is still there and out there for all of us. Um, I felt like I would never get married. I felt like, again, I felt like I would never find anyone that truly loved me. I felt like I would never have someone that would pull out of me everything that was in me. Heck, stuff I didn't even know that was in me. I was like, what? What? No. Like, over the last 10 years, I really discovered Shawanika, Chauncey, Tay. She all the same person, y'all. But I've really discovered me, and that's because God placed my husband in my life. He's helped me to understand my potentials. And it's God working through him to deliver it to me. And I'm truly grateful for that. Like, becoming a public speaker. God, had my husband not come along, I wouldn't have even thought about wanting to talk in front of people. Um, writing my books. Never. Like, I really laid on this book for 10 years before I even got a chance to like really put it out because I was, I was scared. I was scared. I laid on it actually 20 years because it was prior to my husband that I was laying on it. Like I need to write this book. I got stuff to say. I need to help somebody, but I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. I, I just didn't have confidence in myself or anything like that. Not to say that um, people give you confidence, but it's good to have someone around you who can encourage you and boost and, and pull you up instead of all the people around you that pull you down, that want to see you stay down, that see, want to see you fall. They prey on your downfall. I'm working progress, y'all, so y'all already know. But they do. They prey on your downfall. They want to see you um, fail. They want to continue to do better than you. It's like a competition. And I don't understand why it's a competition. It's like there's enough room for everybody in this world to do well. There's enough food on the table for everybody to eat. There's enough money in the world for everybody to make. I don't make a lot of it. You know, I eat a lot of the food, but I don't make a lot of this money out here in this world. So why compete with me? Like why find ways to not support? Why find ways to tear me down, defame me, um, you know, make my character look bad, make it look like I'm the person that's causing A, B, C, D? Why do that? You know, what What are you gaining? And at the end of the day, when you want to see me fall, you still won't win. You're still not winning because it's not for you. My blessings are for me. Yours are for you. Take yours and take them. I take mine and I go with mine. No matter how much you try to take me away from my blessings or try to destroy the things that are meant for me, you can't. You keep trying. But every time you try to tear me down, you just continue to bless me right on up. So I don't understand the competition that has happened around me um, for all of my life. I felt like I've been in competition and I hate it because I just want to live life and be happy. I want to be free as a bird to flow through the earth. Like legit, that's what I want. I, I don't want to feel like that person next to me is competing with me or they're jealous of something that I've got going on. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to covet my neighbor's husbands, wives, however, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be envious of the things that they have and just and desire because I don't know what they went through to get that blessing. Just like you don't know what I went through to get mine. Even with me sharing the things I'm sharing with you right now, there's a lot more in my life that I've been through that I feel like God has seen, seen me through them and he's saying, here, I'm going to give you beauty for those ashes. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to bless you with someone who loves you someone who adores you, someone who is now your best friend, 
someone you can talk to and feel confident in knowing that what you and him talk about is between you and him and God. You know, so, you know, I, I appreciate my husband because he really has become a, my heaven on earth. And I'm truly grateful for him. I really, really look up, to, look to him, look up to him. And I'm thankful for God for seeing fit to giving us what we needed when we needed it most. Because I don't think I could have survived the deaths of my father, grandmother, and uncle without him being there with me. You know, I don't think, you know, I think I, if I had the men that were around me, then I probably would be gone, y'all. Truth be told, I probably would have gave up a long time ago. But because of the support I have in my husband, because of the love we share with each other, I continue on. Um, and he helps me with that. Um, my children are great supporters, you know, the, um, and they help me with the, the situations that I get into, you know, help me to feel valued, feel loved. They, they show their appreciation for the wisdom that has been imparted in me that I pour out into them for them to be wise. Like I literally hear my daughter, uh, my one that's in college, in my one that's um, in Indiana, I hear them talk and just talk about how, man, I told so and so, so, and they sound like me. You know, it's like, oh, look at there, they're listening. You know, it's like, it's beautiful. And then my son, you know, making wise choices, doing well in life. And it, you know, I just, I don't ever want them to feel like they've got to prove anything to me. I want to let them know every time I talk to them, I'm proud of them and the things they're accomplishing. I'm proud of the young men and women they're becoming. Even my little one that's on the way up to be an adult. I mean, whoa, 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 whoa. She ain't no adult yet. She ain't but 11, y'all. So that's working towards, you know, growing up and becoming a teenager and then an adult, you know. I always want them to know that I'm proud of them, that I love them, and that, you know, they don't have to show me or prove anything to me. I just want them to have a happy life and always know that mom was always proud of them, always know that mom um, truly loves them, and there's no competition. You ain't got to compete with siblings for my love. I got enough of it to share with y'all and everybody else in this world, so um, I always want them to know that. And my husband, man... Man, that's that's my homie. We go way back. And um, I thank God for him. I do. I thank God every day for him. And I ask God to watch over him every time he goes out into this world to do what he does. And I'm truly grateful to have him because um, life would have been challenging, I think, without him. So I'm grateful that God saw fit to put him in my life. To He helped build my um, Christ life even more. Like, I was, I was in church. And I was, you know, living right, trying to do what I need to do for God. I was in choir and, you know, doing different things. But my relationship, I didn't have that. I didn't have that relationship. But my husband's relationship with Christ helped to develop mine. And I found my own relationship with Christ. Instead of, you know, feeding off of his, I developed my own. And um, I thank God I'm, I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming the woman that I'm supposed to be. He tells me all the time I'm his proverb, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he tells me all the time that I'm his Proverbs 31 woman. And I was like, whoop, what kind of woman is that, honey? Is that a good thing? And, you know, from the Bible, you're thinking, oh, yeah, that's good, that's good. So I had to find out and understand what he meant by that and really truly understand what a Proverbs 31 woman was. And I'm truly grateful that he sees me in that light. And I try to exemplify that and be that person for him. I'm not put on a show or anything of that nature. Excuse me. <coughs> been talking, y'all. We've been talking. We've been talking. Hmm. I'm not saying that to put on a facade or anything like that. I'm truly, truly, truly grateful for him. And I do the things I do because he appreciates it. Um, it's nothing more. It's nothing um, more hurtful than to do something for someone and they show no appreciation. Um, let, let me be clear in this. I don't do the things I do for people out of the kindness of my heart because I want a pat on the back. Um, but I also don't want people to snuff me as I'm doing things out of the kindness of my heart. Like, I'm going to do it because I'm, I'm called to do it. I don't need recognition for it. I don't need accolades, you know, for it if I'm doing it. Um, I just, I, don't, I, I guess for me it's like, at least, at least appreciate what people are doing for you in this world. So don't be so mean and cold to where you just feel like, are oh, you supposed to do that for me? Now what, son? Like, oh, sorry. 
Sorry, sorry. I had a flashback. But, um, no, at least appreciate when people go out of their way to do things for you, you know, because they don't have to do anything that they do. But when they do, just to show that appreciation. And he they, he does that very well. Um, he truly appreciates me. He know, He pays attention to me, and he realizes when I need a moment. He realizes when I need time away. He realizes when I need a break. Um, he's like really observant, and I thank God for the blessing of him to have a husband like him that really um, pays close attention to me and my needs. And that's what makes it so easy for me to continue to pay attention to his needs and ensure that um, his needs are met and that we are equal in this. We're equally yoked, and I'm truly grateful for that. Um, and then, you know, understanding in the end of the hope section of my book that we're all born to be useful. Now, that's a section that's titled that way. A lot of these are titled in this book this way. But I want you to dig into it. I may not give a whole lot in the section when I give it, but I'm going to give it to you in an understanding way that we're all born to be useful. God has uniquely and wonderfully made all of us. And he wants us to go out into the world and do something great with our lives and to do what it is he's calling us to do. For some people, we get that. We understand that very early on in our lives. And for some of us, it takes time for us to grow and develop into what it is that he wants us to do. So... With that being said, um, we got to realize that everyone has a purpose here in life and it's up to you to discover what that purpose is. No matter how long it takes you to get there, always be living and striving for understanding that purpose you have in life. Um, never feel like, you know, again, like I said in the beginning, that you're too old or um, that it's too late for you to do this, that, or the other. If it's still in your heart, it was placed there. That means you still got time to do it because you know what? You're still walking. You're still breathing. All these things are still taking place within your world. So because you still have breath in your body and you have the ability of your limbs and you can still go out and do things, time is still on your side. Until God calls you home, you've got a lot of work still here to do. So do it. Get up. Find out what that purpose, that passion is, that desire, that drive, that thing that gets you up and gets you going, gets you giddy on the inside. Find out what it is and go after it and do, do those things. Do the things that make you happy and um, really um, enjoy life. Um, I say something, something I say all the time, live life on purpose and with purpose. I'll say it again in case you missed it. Live life with purpose no back up live life on purpose with purpose so you want to live life and do it purposefully you want to make sure you're living and not just existing you want to make sure you're not complacent in the things that are going on around you and really truly uncover you unpeel peel those layers of onions you know onions make you cry it's the best analogy when you're peeling those layers back you're gonna cry because you're gonna start to see you know, all of that that you've been bottled, that's been bottled up on the inside of you. And once you start to peel those onions, then you'll start, then you start to see and realize like, man, um, hmm, I didn't know ABCD about me. Um, I didn't know that I was holding on to that. Or man, that still hurts me. That still haunts me. And it's, it's gonna be painful. But it's the pain that, you know, you can endure and get through to get to the other side, to get to that next chapter, the next phase, to release the past traumas, hurts, and um, disappointments. Um, peel that onion, because that onion is what's going to help you to discover you. Um, a lot of us have been living life undiscovered, um, been living life without peace. A lot of us have been living in this world, just existing in this world, and really not wanting to uncover and discover our, our purpose. So I pray that <clears throat> me sharing um, who I am and pieces of me has helped someone um, discover and uncover themselves. I pray that um, that this message reaches you and that it teaches and it touches you, not teach. And I pray it teaches you something too. But I pray that it touches your spirit and it, and it helps you to really dig into yourself and see where are you? Ask yourself those questions. Where am I? Am I at peace? 
or am I just existing? And if you're not able to answer yourself and say that you're at peace, then find out how to discover and find that peace that's necessary for us all. Um, we don't have to be mean to others in the process. We won't have to tear anybody down. We won't have to, you know, be cold hearted or anything like that. We just have to find our peace, set our boundaries, and really um, be able to live life happy. Every day is not going to be happy. Hear me out. I am not saying we're going to be uh, rainbows and butterflies every single day. That is not reality. But we can get to a life that is very close to that. Very close to that. And I, I know that my relationship with Christ, my relationship with my husband, and my relationship with myself is what's helping me to stay, to find, that, that helped me to find that peace, and it's helping me to stay in that peace. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, sharing of me, helping you to understand me. Um, the next time that we meet, we'll be talking about the women of the Bible um, that I can relate to and that I know a lot of you can relate to and that we we are or that we have become. So we'll be trying to understand who am I and who do I want to become. Understanding what woman we are currently, because honestly, we've been each one of them at some point. Some of us have been all of them at one point. Um, but it's like, who do we want to become? What woman do we want to become? We don't want to just look at the women in the Bible that were prosperous and that did life right. We want to look at the women in the Bible that um, had the odds stacked against them. We want to look at the women in the Bible who didn't do life right. We want to look at those women in the Bible and really talk about them and understand how these women, how God used these women to serve his purpose. So know that God will use you. No matter what your bad past is and what things that may have happened in your life, God will use you. God does not call the perfect. He calls the broken. He calls the downtrodden. He calls the ones that that need that they're down in, in the dumps and he need to lift up. Not he calls the ones that, you know, are are in, in desperate need of, of a savior. If you already say if you already got it figured out, you don't need a savior, he he'll use you. But he's going to really call on those ones that's been through it. And he's going to use them to help show the goodness of him, to paint the picture of who God is, and to help make a difference in this dark world. I'm praying for all of you that God's um, light will shine through me, that as we talk about the women of the Bible, that I will be removed, and that God will be in me and allow me to be able to talk about the women of the Bible in the way he wants me to talk about them. Um, I hope you guys, like I said, enjoyed this, and I pray that it helps somebody. If it only helps just one, then I've done what God called me to do. But I know that it's called to help more than just one, so I know that God's going to touch the lives of those that it needs. It's going to touch the lives of those that it needs to touch, and God's going to continue to uh, pour into me what I need to pour out into you guys. So um, thank you for listening and watching. I think this is like part four. Um, sorry that it got so long, but I felt like breaking it up gave you time to process it um, versus giving it all to you at once. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Join me um, the next time we meet to talk about the women of the Bible and understand like who you relate to, who um, you are right now, and who you want to become. And, and it's not becoming that person per se, but to take on the um, the um, behaviors of that person and to become a better person and to not be stuck in our old ways so much to where we feel like, oh, I'm good, I'm the stuff, I don't need to do A, B, C, D, but coming to the realization that we all got a little work to do. We all got things that we need to um, to grow in and mature in and, you know, so just... Be honest with yourself and where you are. So as you listen to the women of the Bible, um, as I share them, I pray that you are honest with yourself. Really take a deep dive internally and really see um, where you are. Really understand um, where you want to go and how to get there. Pray that you really um, allow yourself to process each week as we talk everything that comes of this and that it helps you to continue to grow. 
that is all I have in regards to induction, introduction to me. Stay tuned for the women of the Bible. Who am I and who do I want to become? Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for allowing me, allowing me to be vulnerable in this space and to share my story. For those of you who felt like I gave too much out to the world to know, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but it was put on my heart to give it to the world to know. So I'm sharing it in hopes that it'll help somebody else. Um, I'm still going to be me. You can talk about me all you want to, but I know whose child I am and I know he's going to protect me. So be careful. Be careful. Touch not thy anointed. Touch not God's child because I know I am his child. And I know that he'll watch over me and keep me safe and protect me from the dangers of this world. So I thank you. Um, I want to close out in prayer. I've never done this on my channel before, but I pray every day. Um, but I feel like God's inclining me to move in this vein. And every, um, every part of the who am I and who do I want to become, I want to close each one of those out in prayer as well. So um, if you're done watching and you don't want to pray with me, click off. But I'm going to pray and pray us out and ask that God continues to watch over us through the rest of this week, this month, this year, and cover us. Heavenly Father, I come to you today thanking you for this opportunity this opportunity to use this platform to be a light in this dark place. Lord, I pray that the people in this world that hear my message to Lord, are, are, that they receive this message and that their lives are transformed by hearing about mine. I pray that they know that I'm recovering the Lord and they can also recover as well. I pray that your healing begins in all of those that are out here in this world, Father God. Lord, I pray that you continue to just um, allow me to be that teacher, that teaching vessel you need me to be. I pray that you continue to exude through me, the Lord, and allow me to be removed and you to enter into me as I share with them the women of the Bible, the Lord, to help them to understand who they are and who they should who they want to become so father god have your way in us i pray that they go out into this week and they do well in this week and that they continue to try to live a life of prosperity um, of healing and connection with you lord and i pray that you continue to get the glory and get the victory in all thank you father for this day and this opportunity and may you continue to bless us with many more in your darling son jesus name i pray and give great thanks amen Be blessed. I almost forgot y'all. I'm, I'm looking over here going to stop this, y'all. But y'all know I got to close out, right? Because y'all know what? Be blessed and less stressed because Chauncey speaks. Bye, y'all.